Good morning. This is Desiree Dubois, founder of An Empowered Woman and Homework. And homework is where you live, where you work, work where you live, anywhere in the world. And every Wednesday morning, we gather for coffee and conversation on different topics, um, topics, different topics, different programs, different um, you know, products that are going to make us, our lives as entrepreneurs, as women, much easier and faster and better. So yesterday we had a conversation or a brief conversation about time and time management. So I realized that it's probably kind of on the top of everyone's list right now, especially since we are transitioning. You know, we're now transitioning from being at home and in our slippers and sweats and being able to work in that you know, that way and schedule our time between our either children or our partners or whoever else we were coexisting with. But now we have the hybrid. Now many of us are going out to meetings again and going out to appointments again. So we really takes back on that, um, that uh, it still takes on that job of being able to really schedule our time and manage our time. And we hear the saying all the time saying, if you don't manage your time, your time while I'm managing you, which means like, okay, we won't get what we want to get done. I think we all uh, many times wake up and say, okay, I've got so much to do today, or I'm so busy, or I've been so busy, and then wonder how you're going to get it all done. So there's a few things that I want to start with and that are very elementary, but I just uh, challenge you to try it. You know, just like um, they say when you're trying to do your money management, that you write every penny down that you're going to, you're spending. And then you're able to look at it and see where you've been spending your money. Or when you're going through a diet, that's if you write down every single solitary thing you eat and drink. You know, then you're able to look back at it and see what you've been eating and drinking. Many times you can find the culprit. Well, the same thing with your time. You know, if you just take out for an, as an easy starting exercise, if you can either take out a piece of paper or something and just actually start writing down everything that you are doing okay i spent you know this as i spent from this time to this time doing this from this time to this time doing that and like even by the minutes or whatever then you're able to look at it and say okay i'm realized spending a lot of time um reading my emails or a lot of time you know creating templates or you know posts or a lot of time talking with my team or a lot of time just doing random things, making lunch, making coffee, things of that type. So write it down. I mean, they can just kind of even just humor yourself and say, hey, today I'm going to just write down from this time on, nine, so on, write it down what you're doing and what you did during the day and then look at it into the day and you kind of see where your time goes. So that's one of the very, very basic things, but it does work. It works a lot. And the many times also it's just, again, just being able to focus on it. Another thing I have some few notes here, but I'm going to move closer in front of me is some of the things is that what your workspace is. I find that makes a really big difference. And again, what happens is you wind up spending time moving around. You wind up spending time moving your laptop from this room to that room, setting up your computer, plugging it in, getting your pencils or papers, your phones, getting your cups, getting things around. You spend minutes, if it's not, people call me a second counter, but if it's, it's spend time organizing yourself. So have a space, try to find a space in your house that you will consistently call your office or your workspace, you know, whether it's a shared space or not, but find that space so that you don't have to spend time, where's my iPad, where's my this, where's my that, and so forth. Little things like that make a big difference. So have a certain space and then have a space that you can set up and then control to a certain point. Like if you don't want people to come into that space. So I know even... You know, a long time ago, when my kids were young, I was working from my um, bedroom. And so I would take a bandana, a red bandana, and tie it on my door. And it didn't even have to be closed, but I could hear the little pitter-patter walking, walking down the hallway. But when they saw that red band bandana, it means stop. It meant, like, go back, do not disturb. That was my do not disturb sign. And then when it, it was off the door, then they could come in and interact with me. So little things like that that you can have either a do not disturb sign or a... Uh, you know, we have an open space in um, homework and live, work, share. And I suggest to people that we have our desks, either have a, all the desks for the most part when you're working, have flower. So when the flower vase is on this side of your desk, that means do not disturb. So as long as there's the flowers there, do not disturb. Just leave, walk away. When the flower's not there, that means they can open and ask you questions. So find something within your space that if you're sharing a space with anybody, uh, that you can designate that do not disturb. They know that's a time not to ask you questions because every time you're interrupted, every time you stop doing something, I've heard different reports that it takes anywhere from 
from, you know, two minutes to 10 minutes, depends on what you're working on to get back into the sync of things, getting it back into your groove, you know, so make sure that you just actually have those um, communication that go not to disturb. And then when you do that, then actually start planning your time. Okay, it sounds again, very, very basic, but whether it's a Sunday or it's a Monday morning or whatever your week starts, whatever your generally people take off different days, different times, but whatever starts, kind of plan it. And don't try to plan it. Start with what you want to accomplish that week. What's your goals? What's your big goals? If we have, we all have all these things that are on our list between personal things, between uh, professional things, between family things, between fun things and all that good stuff. But what's your big goal this week? You know, you need to go from a month What's your big goal to accomplish this month? We have a mastermind pod that we meet every morning at 6.15 and we go by our month goal. What do we want to accomplish this month? But then you can break it down to, okay, if I need to accomplish that goal, what needs to happen every week? You know, so if I want to build a new website, or if I want to launch a new program, if I want to have a new hire, then I, I, I break it down. Okay, then week one, I'm going to need to put the ads out. I'm going to need to um, write the ads, put them out, distribute them, monitor them, and maybe schedule the appointments. Week two, I would have the appointments. I'll start doing the interviews, and I'll schedule the interviews in the time that I allotted for that, and start vetting through them and deciding what that process is. Week three could be maybe that onboarding process, you know, because during that whole process, it's going through the process of elimination. So even from the interviewing process to the onboarding process, you may lose some people or things will come up. So you have that third week of, okay, now I'm going to show them the onboarding process and I have it all organized in Trello or a pro or program similar to that so that I can have all checklists of what we need to do for onboarding. Do we need to get them the phone number? Do they need to get an email? Do they need to set up their own calendar? Will they need to set up their email templates? So do I need the pictures? Do I need the bios? Am I going to do an announcement? That's that three, three. And then week four, you know, it could be that week that we actually start, you know, working together. So I have accomplished that goal in that month. You know what? So again, whether it's launching a new program or whatever it is, because we say we want to do all these great things, but then maybe we don't give ourselves enough time to do it or do it effectively, or maybe we're doing too many things. So find out your big goals. Those big goals should be things that are going to make a difference in your life, a real difference in your life. You know, something's going to change the course, move the needle in your business, you know, or move the needle on your relationships, whether it's your family or partners, or move the needle on yourself, your self-help, you know, whether you were trying to lose weight or trying to get your hair in better condition or new, get a new wardrobe, whatever it is, it should be something that's really going to make a difference in your life. And it could be even just cleaning out your closet. I know many times that just lightens up a whole lot of things. So once you get it down, break it down to the week and then break it down to the day. You know, then in your day and break it down to um, your times. And I am an advocate of chunk times, which means like from six to nine is a certain time from nine to 12, from 12 to three, from three to six and so forth, whatever way you want to chunk your time. Many of you are going to work it around your family schedules, you know, whether you're picking up your children or not. Um, many of you are working around some other commitments. If you're working in nine to five, you have to work it around that. But if you get this certain times and chunk, we can really focus in on something, then it's really much more valuable and you'll get a lot more done because you'll finish that time or that focus time and you'll say, oh, this is what was accomplished. Now, there's this big dispute about um, multitasking. You know, and I've had people have shared with me different science about how it's not really as effective as we think it is effective and how it's not effective at all. For many people, they believe that, that, um, and one of the, what was the young lady, Kim, you may have seen her in some of the calls, her son was the, um, her son was the marketing director or something like that for Airbnb for years. So he's a relatively young person and he um, was very successful. He's actually retired now. So to have someone's son retired, it's like amazing, but he did some great things with Airbnb. So you can imagine how busy he's a marketing director he must have been. And, but she said that he firm believer and he studied multitasking does not work um, and he would never do it. He also is a firm believer of the chunk time that he would, no matter what it was, whether it was a family and so forth, he'd turn off all his notifications. He turned off like you could not reach him during certain times, period. 
you know, and even on his voicemail, I think we all have this experience with someone said, hi, my name is so-and-so, I'll be returning my calls between this time and this time, or I'll be returning, even their email autoresponder. They have, you know, like you set it up for vacations, they set up their email autoresponder saying, hi, thank you so much for your email, I'll be checking emails between this time and this time and get back to you during that time. And that's what he did. He was strict about that in his professional and his personal life. You know, so she was teasing about the fact that he was not impromptu about anything. Hey, let's go to dinner. Well, it was scheduled. So there is a happy medium, I believe, with that. But the fact is, is that he was that you had he had to be that disciplined to handle what he did and be successful enough to be able to retire. I think he's like in his 40s or something that type. So find a practice that works for you. Um, and then and then be able to stick with it. A lot of it is, especially now that a lot of people now are working from home, a lot of people have been used to working in the office space and having those, um, you know, those uh, accountability, I guess it is, being there at a certain time, having lunch at a certain time, being back at a certain time, um, having breaks at a certain time, leaving for the day at a certain time. You know, they've had that structure. But now as an entrepreneur, we have two things. We have the luxury of doing things when we want to do it, the way we want to do it, where we want to do it, how we want to do it. But we also have the disadvantage of having that luxury because some of us are just not or just have not implemented a discipline to make us be successful. So, you know, so as an entrepreneur, what are some of the things that you're think about what you'd be doing if it was someone was if someone you're paying yourself, right? Hopefully. Think about if you'd be doing if someone else was paying you. So would you go, if you worked for, say, Bank of America, would you be answering your phone and looking at your phone all day, you know, for hours at a day if you worked at Bank of America? Would you be running up and down, getting snacks every so often, you know, coffee, this and that and so forth, you know, like often if you worked at Bank of America, if you, you had a manager or someone sitting right there, would you be running to the store to pick up this and then running back? Would you be doing a load of laundry and then coming back to the office? Would you be talking to your girlfriend or your family friends on the phone if it was outside your break or lunchtime if you worked at Bank of America? So if you wouldn't do it for somebody else with under their management, then why do you do it for you? Why do you take such liberties on your own time when it's so extremely valuable? Because many times you're doing more than you would be doing if you'd worked for a company because at a company, maybe you'd have somebody else doing an assistant or someone else doing some menial tasks. When you're working for yourself many times until you outsource that, you're doing those tasks. So pretend when you're thinking your mindset, switch your brain to the fact that if someone was, I had a supervisor watching over me, would I be doing this this way? Or would I be, you know, if I know I had to do this between this hour and that hour, would I be doing that? Would I be more regimented? And it could sound like, well, you know, you say, Desiree, well, that's the whole point of me being an entrepreneur. I don't want to be under those constraints. I don't want to be regimented like that. Then what you compromise is all that free time you thought you were going to have as an entrepreneur. Because all that free time, you're going to be either doing all those things that you didn't get done, or you're going to be compromising the, the compensation, your rewards, your salary, your money, your income, because you didn't get those things done that you're supposed to be getting done. So you had to kind of make a decision as to, okay, what's more important, having some regimen and some discipline. And I spoke yesterday about office hours, like what really are your office hours? What are your work hours? If I say what's your hour, so can you tell me what hours you work? You know, what's your really your working hours are? Um, then if you won't do it, if you're doing it for somebody else, you should do it for yourself. And if you do it for yourself, you'll be able to have all that freedom and flexibility that you think you'll do, you think you want it to have. So a couple of things. Because it's going to go through your list. So align your focus. You know, focus on um, what is going to make the difference and your priorities. And so that helps you get you just write it down, the good old fashioned, write it down. I still put my things in Trello. I love Trello. So I'll go through a checklist. I'll do like a quote unquote a brain dump and put it in Trello and just put everything there. And then when it in Trello, when you do that, then you can decide, you can look at it and say, okay, this is going to be priority here. I can move, you can move your checklist. You can move your items on your checklist. You can move your items from one list to the other list from like, you know, Monday to a Tuesday and so forth. So you have that flexibility, but find whatever works for you, you know, but get everything down. You want to get done. And especially those little things that have been nagging you, like you've got to finish some taxes or you've got to finish something that's broken. You got to get that uh, chair fixed for your patio or little things like that. You know, chunk them all down 
And then that way it's such a relief when you check it off and it's done. It's such a good feeling when it's done. So when I have that on Trello, I can check it off, check it off, check it off. And before you know it, I can just delete all those and I can see the very, very few things that you know that weren't done. And there's always going to be something, something. So I'm not saying you have to get everything done every day, but the difference it makes by being able to do that and to experience that is so lifting and it's so because lots of times what really boggles us down is our mind what really boggles us down what really takes up our energy is thinking about all the things we have to get done and I'm sure I'm not the only one that sometimes it's like ah, yeah, I got all these things to get done that that takes so much energy so even if you feel you're moving that dent a little bit then you're feeling much more relieved, you're feeling much more accomplished, you're feeling much more optimistic and consequently you'll be able to get more done. Um, another thing that I've implemented that I found really fun and useful, is, especially if you live by yourself, it doesn't even matter, you know, post-it notes, take those little post-it notes. And I've taken those little post-it notes and pink different colors for this, yellow for this. Yellow could be for personal things, pink can be for work things, blue can be for fun things, whatever the case may be. You know, and I just, things I've done, I put it all on them in the category by the color that it needs to be. And I'll put them all in a mirror or all in a wall, maybe all in your closet door, but each, I just put it in my bathroom mirror because that way it doesn't escape me. Or in my office, and if I have an office, I have a whiteboard and I'll put it all on the whiteboard. And as I get things done, I take them off, you know, and immediately it's immediate gratification. Immediately, I can see, okay, I got all these things done. So I say, I'm going to do all my personal things between six and nine. I wake up at six. Now I start my day, my business hour starts at nine. So six and nine is my flow time. I can order my flowers. I can play in my closet. I can do my yoga. I can do my master class at 15. I can take a walk. I can do whatever I want to do. It's my personal time. Okay. And I let it flow time because that's the way I want to start my day. But then at nine o'clock, I'm at my desk or I'm at a call or I'm doing something at that point, if not before. And then from nine to 12, then I try to do those. I have certain days even that I call quote unquote makeup days or if you call it mascara days, days that I'm on camera that I'll um, be, be a little more presentable than others or be prepared. So those are days that I know that I, in my mind, I know my days are Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays, unless I'm doing something special for a weekend program or summit or power seven or something like that. But those are technically my work days where I feel I have to show up a certain way. So I plan things accordingly. So that's usually between nine and 12. And then at 12 o'clock, then it switches to, I have my assistant and I, we do on Zoom and we do our magazine or other things that we need to do from my usually 12 to 2.30 or 12 to three. So that's my accountability partner I know that I got to get this done before I get by 12 noon because I got to sit on the thing I got to sit on the call with Bernard and he's expecting me to have this part done or I'll get it done when I'm on with him because I know that we're just sometimes just quiet just working away that's accountability and that's why I recommended you to find an accountability partner you know just find some within your community that will say hey even if it's just for a week you know you can really feel the benefits of these habits in a short period of time like a week it doesn't take months and months. Even in a week, you can feel this, the difference that some one act, um, one change would make in your, in your life. And then from you know, that three o'clock, I take a break or whatever. And then I start doing phone calls until six when I think people are moving around or whatever. So kind of just, that's that blocking of your time, but focus on what's gonna be important for you to get done. And again, use the stickers or the post-its post if you like, because then again, at the end of the day or at the end of the week, it just disappears, disappears, disappears. And you can see, and don't be so hard on yourselves. You know, set goals, accomplish the goals, celebrate the little goals so that you're really truly in celebration for the big goals. So that's your line, your focus. And I talked about using chunking, again, chunking your time. So it could be a chunk of 20 minutes. It could be a chunk of hours. It could be a chunk of whatever it is. But during that time, notifications are off, emails are off really be disciplined about that time that you're dedicating to something, especially if you're creating, you know, when you're creating something, you're writing something, you're creating an email, you're creating a video, whatever it is, again, you just need to focus on that. Give it that time if it's worth it. And you'll find that you get to finish faster because all these interruptions, sometimes it takes me hours to do something that I know I could have done in 20 minutes, but I've allowed interruptions or I'm doing this and doing that. And you pay for it, you pay for it at the end. Um, determine your priorities. Again, what's more important? What is going to 
um, either move your needle forward in your life or your business or what's going to be the most profitable for you or what's going to be most beneficial for you. Just set what the priorities are. Again, you can color code things. You can prioritize them and list whatever way you have to go. And then we talked yesterday even about setting SMART goals. Who knows? So many people know what the SMART goals are. SMART goals. So it's getting something that SMART goals are something that's very specific, you know, specific. Like I am going to, um, I was talking to Jennifer about the video. She has like a, you know, a year's full of videos. All of us must have content, whether it's videos or articles and whatever. So be very specific. I'm going to get these videos or whether it's 10 videos or 12 videos. We know the more specific you are, even as far as manifesting, then the more accomplishable it is. So if you say, I am going to get four videos out every week, you know, or get, you know, three articles repurposed every week, whatever it is, be very specific about it. And then have something you can be measured, you can actually see, okay, you can measure, you can see that they've been out or it's done. And then the, make it very achievable. Don't make things that are just impossible for you to achieve. So make it achievable so you don't set yourself up for failure. And then being very realistic about what it's going to take. Is it something that you can do or something you're going to need a team member to do, something you'll need to outsource, whatever it is, but be very realistic about, can you achieve that? If you say, I want to write a book in a week, okay, is that really realistic? Maybe you can, some people can, but is that realistic for you? Or are you setting yourself up? And then be anchored with a time frame. okay? Give ourselves time frame. The same thing I said from six to nine is my time frame. From nine to 12 is my time frame. For you, from Monday to Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday is my time frame. for, you know, things of that type. So set it a time, give yourself a time. You don't have to be hard on yourself. Just being, the being uh, intentional. Being intentional is not being hard on yourself. It's just being intentional and then you will be able to get it done. So set those sparkles, something that's specific, that's measurable, that's achievable, that's realistic, and that's anchored within a time frame. And then, then you'll be able to, again, as you accomplish those goals, that you will be able to feel much better for it. And you'll be able to focus. You'll be able to laser focus on that. The um, minimize distractions, we talked about that, you know, just really set yourself up where you don't have distractions for certain things. Now, some things people can multitask. Um, you know, I can listen to a podcast and do my hair at the same time or do my makeup at the same time. I can, um, you know, certain things I can, but when I'm trying to work really, even having things in the background, like background music or background videos or anything that time, it doesn't really work. So try and find out really what it takes for you to be very focused and minimize your distractions and then hold yourself accountable. You know, again, like, you know, just, I guess, just if you were the manager, if you were the boss of you, you know, we say, he says, oh, I'm the boss of me. So if you're the boss of you, you know, then what kind of employee are you? <laughs> would you be fired already? Or would you be hired? Like if you were the boss of you, if you were watching, if you were the manager on the outside looking in, what kind of, um, how would you rate yourself? Did you give yourself again, would you want to hire more of you or would you say, well, that's a kind of a slacker or she's not focused or she you know, doesn't get it done. So just really hold yourself accountable and then outsource. And that's the hardest thing, I think, even for myself, because, you know, it's just, you know, it's a constant process. You know, I just I want someone to come in and stay forever. <laughs> but every time I have to really outsource an interview and go through the process, I had this person all set up. To start this week, and I spent uh, Monday, which was uh, yeah, no, last Friday, you know, at Friday at five o'clock, you know, going reviewing everything with her. I thought everything was great, everything's wonderful, and gave her three options of things that she could work on and so forth. And then she's supposed to call me, connect with me over the weekend so she could start yesterday, and she didn't, you know. So now it's like ugh, now I got to go back, you know, again, go back out there again, and so it's a process. You know, but I know, so it's easier for me when I do that, for me to say, okay, I'll just do it myself. I can do it myself. I imagine doing myself. But should I be doing it myself? No. Even if you can do it yourself, and you should know how to do it yourself so you can better direct someone in doing something. But should you be doing it yourself? We all know and hear about working in your business and working on your business. And we all can look at any successful company around us and know that it's not just them. Even if it's just a small team, some people are doing really well. They've got maybe an assistant and maybe somebody, one other person for social media or media, whatever it is like that. But they have it. every successful person that's making six figures and seven figures, they have at least two other people working with them. 
doesn't have to be full time, doesn't have to be, but it's just, they're not doing it themselves and they can't do it themselves. There's not one multi-million dollar company that is run by one person. It's impossible. So we have to just be very comfortable and being organized where it's easy for us to bring somebody else on. And it's not more, it's not easier. When it becomes easier for you to do it yourself and you know that you need to reanalyze what you're, what, what you're, what you're doing. If, if I say to me, well, it's just easier and faster for me to do it myself, then I know that I'm not managing my time, I'm not managing my business well, because it shouldn't be. You know, it shouldn't be somewhat, it should be easier and faster for somebody else that is um, my subordinate that I've hired to do that job so I can work on my business and move the big picture forward. So really think about outsourcing. And I was sharing that um, sometimes if it can be even like virtual assistants, some of them could be anywhere from, if you're hiring from the Philippines, outsourcing it, um, then it could be as low as three, four, five, seven dollars an hour. And locally, sometimes even $15, $20, $35 an hour, sometimes up to 75, but you should be able to get a decent person at 25, $35 an hour. Um, but if you're organizing, you put it in Trello or a source like that, you don't need them for 20 hours a week. You can even get by with them for 10 hours. So I thought, okay, well, I need to be able to hire some for 20 hours or 40 hours. I couldn't fire somebody, you know, some, you know, starting my business um, at, you know, $35 or $40 an hour for 40 hours a week, couldn't do it. So I have done myself. So I said, well, what about hiring them for 20 hours? This is part-time. And then, okay, well then what about hiring them for 10 hours? You can hire, I'm decided today that I'm just going to hire someone for my infusion work, you know, for four hours. If someone's really sharp, they know what they're doing, they've done it enough to know that it can be done, please meet yourself if you can, um, then I can be done in four hours. So even if I had to wind up paying $50 a person for four hours, I, it's $200, but I'm saving myself that time um being able to do other things and work on my business whether it's making sales calls whether it's making calls for sponsorships making them maybe making calls for you know partnerships those are calls that i will be, be able to make a lot more than i'm going to have to let me mute mute all that um you know those are those are calls that I should be making during that time so that two hours or that four hours a week is really important those are the calls that um Maybe anyone that um, can mute themselves. Okay, let's see. There we go. Thank you. Um, yeah, the uh, yeah. So anyone, anything that you can be doing in that time frame is going to be worth it. Again, working on your business as opposed to working in your business. So if I can be that four hours, if I spent four hours calling potential sponsors or potential investors or potential following up on the sales, that's much more valuable than me creating emails for four hours or me creating you know, content. So one big thing is outsourcing, even if it's just again for two hours a week or four hours a week, even if it's just someone, they have a lot of the great um, uh, companies that are outsourced and if you get organized enough you can work with the people that are in outsource and in, um, in the philippines and so forth have ph jobs there's a lot of different sites and if you need some i'll gladly refer you to some that we've used or some that um, we are familiar with that can do certain things that happen over and over again things that are kind of mundane things that just happen automatically that you do consistently every week or every month Again, we talk about the video. So if you have a video that you do every week, um, get a format together and source it to two or three people, even on Fiverr. You know, a lot of people are still using Fiverr. I had stopped for a while because I thought it was just like way so overwhelming. There's too many people there. How do you justify or determine who's reliable, who's not reliable and so forth. So someone told me, just look at their reviews. Look at the ones that have really, really high reviews and then test them. Take the one video or the one article that you want to, if you want someone to write content, if you want someone to do social media, whatever it is, take that one and source it to two or three different people. Yes, you may pay initially, you know, whatever it is for two or three people, but what you're doing is you're vetting and then see what they come back with, see how independent they are, how fast they are, how creative they are, see if they match and then select the best one. And then maybe the next best one you'll have as a backup in case something doesn't happen with the next one or the next best one you can use for another project. You know, so um, because they're, you know, they're not all five dollars, but it's still much less than it would be if, if you if you don't need someone that's from 
that depends on your skill level. If you don't need someone that's an Upwork or a monster, someone that's really has higher skills, then it's a great way to start. But you can do it just doing that one thing. Just if you went today and hired one person to one thing off your plate, um, that itself, you utilize that time effectively. And effectively could be taking a nap if you need a nap during the day, or effectively could be your my time, your me time, but effectively could also be working on your business, building your business. Then you will see that that building your business will give you money to be able to bring them on more, 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 more until that you can bring them on more. And then sometimes also the um, you're able to, I see you have a few recommendations. If you have a few recommendations, feel free to put it in the chat. I'm always, where everybody's always looking for a referral. So if you have some companies you work with or have people that you work with, um, that's always the best. Referrals are always the best uh, source. And then being able to do that. So remain accountable and then outsource. Another thing that, um, that wasn't necessarily on our list was to work in teams, work together. You know, work, you don't have to do everything. You know, stop thinking that you have to do everything, which means by yourself. So which means like say you have a project, maybe you're a great marketing person in connections and like being out there and somebody else is a great content person, you know, um, that they are able to doing that then that's huge. You know, take one project at a time, start working with one project, see how it feels and how you gel. But that saves you, that's half the work. That's half the time and it could be double the money. So you may think, okay, well, if I bring somebody else on and we have a project, I'm gonna have to share it with them. Then yeah, but you have to make, if they're bringing value to the table, you're gonna make that much more money. For example, um, just, uh, some projects that I'm working with, some of you have met, you know, Kim. So I said, okay, I want to do this project, but I can't, I don't, can't put it on my calendar. I can't do the whole thing. I can't allow for the whole thing. So you like doing the logistics. You like buying the hotels, meals, doing all that part of it. I like the marketing part. I enjoy the marketing and sharing and doing that part of it. So I'll split or I'll give you a percentage. It doesn't have to be 50-50. You can say, if you're the initiator, you can say, I'll give you 20% or 30%. We'll allow X amount of percentage, 30% for um, expenses, you know, for admin, for outsourcing, whatever it has to be. And then you can get 40%. So still you've gotten 40% of something's better than 100% of nothing, you know, and then also being able to um, being able to accomplish it and do it well and be able to stay in your lane, be able to do what you do best. That's huge. And that's one of the fastest, best ways to grow your business. It doesn't have to be forever. So many people are afraid of, okay, well, what if I don't like this person? What if it doesn't work out? Start by a project. Say, I want to launch my art show. I want to launch my, um, my, um, my garments, undergarments. I want to do that. Who can I partner with? And if hopefully, sometimes you can partner with some companies even larger than you. Now, some of you may say, okay, well, if I do that, they're going to take my idea because they have the money, they have the resources to do so. Not necessarily. A lot of companies, they will, you know, they will want that division and they don't have someone or the bandwidth to be able to grow or to do that division. And if you have that skill set, then they will be able to provide with you the team to be able to work with. For example, when we were first starting, when we started a couple of years ago, we wanted to get more investors and we were really getting investors to build homework. And there was this company and they were an equity fund company and they had a great facilities. They, they had just poured a lot of money into their facilities. They had built out theaters and conference rooms and they had a attorney on staff and they had realtors on staff and they had just hired, hired, hired out because they had that big win and they also had long relationships with their clients. And they, most of their clients that they represented invested in multi-residential and commercial properties. But they realized that their clients wanted to also invest in something kind of new and edgy, which was the co-working, co-living. So they wanted to bring that opportunity to their clients. But even though they had did all this hiring and stuff, they didn't necessarily want to do that whole division on that because they didn't want to test it, they want to see how it worked. So we said, okay, well, you've got all the infrastructure, you've got the legal, you've got the accounting, you've got all that, and you've got the clients. So I'll bring in the program, the homework program, and your clients can invest in that. You know, and so that when you're taking all that away from my plate, yes, we're splitting it. Um, but the thing is, I, can, I have all that done and I felt comfortable with it until I didn't feel comfortable with it. 
All right, because because it got to a point where some of the things, all the deliverables, were not being delivered, and so I thought maybe well, this is not going to work out. So you do have that choice, but that that was a great idea. So I could have taken the time and searched for more companies in that same type of company because I had never even thought of that before. Um, more companies to do that with, and then find the right company that I felt felt was a perfect match. But then we had the pandemic, and that kind of went sideways. So I say that as an example of how you can say that I got this great thing, you know, but it's taken me so long to get through up the runway or it's going to take so much time and I need so many resources and I don't have some of the resources or the financing from some of the resources and even the bandwidth to be able to raise the financing for the resources. And why can't you find someone else who would be a partner that has it and then give yourself time to vet it and to be yourself the luxury of being able to determine whether it's good for you or not. But if it's good for you, you've got such a huge win. If it's not, you've gotten that much closer to a solution to growing. You've got to grow. And that you're just doing this for fun and, you know, as a little hobby and you're not making money with it and you don't need the money, you don't really care about the money, then you've got to grow your business. And you have to think about what's actually going to do it and being able to get more done you know, in the same amount of hours, we all have the same amount of hours, same amount of the Richard Branson, same amount of Oprah, same amount of everyone else. What do they do? They, are they delegate, they're good at delegating, they're good at automating. Um, and so you need to be able to do the same thing, you want to be able to delegate and automate. And then part of that delegating and automating comes to learning how to say no. You know, learn how to say no to something that doesn't serve you during those certain times. You know, many of us will say, oh, okay, and I've got to do the same thing. I say yes to all kinds of opportunities. And my team keeps me accountable because I'll say, yes, we're going to do this. And yes, we can do that. And it's like, you know, slide it over to them on their desk. And it's like, no, we can't do it anymore. I've actually gone through periods of time where I had to commit to not agreeing to do anything else with anybody for anything, whether it's a talking, uh, what, you know, talking, the rain, talking assignment, like, you know, co-hosting an event or a webinar that takes a whole day or we've got a couple of the projects we would love to do. And it's like, no, but I don't have to say no, never. I can say no to not now. No, not this quarter. No, not this year. No, not this moment, not this week, not this month. So if you too think there's things that you want to do, then just say no, not this month, but yes to the next month. You know, maybe December is a slower month for you. Maybe that's a month you can do certain things that you can't do in your high productive times. And that's leads you to another thing. What are your high productive times in your business and in yourself? When are you most productive during your day? Is it in the morning? Is it in the afternoon? Is it in the evening? When are you awake? When are you create? When are you full of light? When are you vibrant? And we've got all these different types of things that you can Google and different types of quizzes and tests you can take for free to determine when your prime time is. Some people wake up in the morning, hit the floor running, and that's a good time for them. They start slowing down around noon or two o'clock or they have that, you know, that lull and they revive themselves in the evening. Sometimes it's the opposite way around. So find out when your best times are, when your most productive times are, when the times are that you feel that you're better on the phone, if it's have phone calls or if you're better and creative. So I find my best times and I do my calls and the webinars and the, these things in the mornings because it kind of kind of wakes me up from my mellow movement that I have between six and nine. So being okay, jumping at nine kind of gets my juices flowing. And then I can I have that quiet time between 12 and three. That's when Bernard and I just we can be creative. I can find pictures, I can find copy, I can do things of that type. And then it kind of just varies from there. I like talking. If I do talking and phone calls in late afternoon, it revives my energy. It just kind of it's different and at night I can do a lot of busy stuff and I can do busy stuff. So find out where your prime time is and take one of those little tests, a quiz, take two of them, take three of them and see what it seems to be your prime time and schedule your life around that. If your prime time, again, if your creative time is best late at night when all is done, then schedule your time accordingly so that you have a time every, every night or a couple of nights a week or whatever the case may be. I found that I used to on a night, I'm nocturnal. I'm trying to change that now, but you know, I would do all my things, but I find that my nighttime, I was really productive, but when I was with somebody. So there was a group of girls that would come over, like one or two of them would come over like two, three nights a week. They would come over like at 9 p.m. And we would get ready to start working at 9 p.m. because we'd have their music going and we'd be able to create different things. And I was really productive in that time. 
you know, and we finished up about by midnight, you know, and but now I'm trying to reverse that, you know, I'm trying to go to bed earlier and blah, blah, blah. So, but whatever works, find out what accountability you need, find out whether you need music or where you need quiet, what you need to, whether you need that candle, whether you need that coffee, what you need to work and what kind of work you can do and when you can do it better. And start with what you want, what your dream life is, and then look at it and make sure it makes sense. So it would, would, would not make sense as if my prime time was calling clients was at 9 p.m. at night. See that no matter what I wanted, that wouldn't work for my clients if I start calling them at nine o'clock to midnight at night. So think about what works for you, ideally what you want, and then scale it down to what really makes sense and what's really something that you can implement and that would, um, that would uh, you know, that would make a difference for you. And then we, going back to that saying no, um, many times call back on instant answers. Like many times when someone asks us a question and sometimes you say no just because you don't really know yet or haven't had time to think about, it. allow yourself, and it's a very, very good habit, time to think. And be feel comfortable saying that, that I need to think about that or give me time to think about it. Or, you know, because um, if even thinking about something is taking your focus off of something that you're doing. So if I, if you're, I'm doing this and someone asked me to think about something that would just distract me, you know, and now I got to get back into my groove that I would have had going. So think about just you know, be comfortable in saying no, not now, not ever, um, or yes, if that's what your answer is, but also being comfortable about thinking about it, you know, try to think about the things, especially the bigger things that's going to really disrupt or take you off of your groove, of your groove, because that can um, just doing that and having to backtrack on that can necessarily be really accountable and then hold yourself accountable. You know, again, going back to the fact, like if you were working for you, you know, um, you know, what would you think about your work habits and your work ethics? And, um, and then you can use different rules. So you, again, you can use the 20 minute rule. They say, do something for 20 minutes and get up and take a break and walk around. I definitely feel like within an hour, if you've been sitting at a computer for an hour, sitting in the seat, you definitely every hour should get up and walk up step stairs, either what's going for water or coffee, whatever, but you just do that to get your body movement, get your juices going and make sure you don't get stagnant, and, but also then come back back. So find out, again, the chunks of time that you can do and for projects and then find out your time that you need to get up and start moving, whether it's just stretching, whether whatever it is, being able to take some movement and being able to that point. Just really, you know, really, you can still be kind to yourself by being accountable. You can still take a break, you know, again, and say, I want to go get my, heat my coffee or again, walk around, get the mailbox, walk to the mailbox and walk back. But that's something that's designed. It's not random. It's something you design for the purpose of being able to move your body and to clear your mind out and then come back to that. So, you know, do those things, take a break and do those things. And then there's so many different skill tools out there where you can manage your time. So many videos, so many things, listen to them, take this seriously because they, we don't have a lot of time if you want to look at it that way. We only have, you know, again, six, eight, 10, 12, 24 hours in a day. That's a, the that's a time. So what you do with that is going to be a difference. And it doesn't have to be, people work two days a week, three days a week, and they're very, very productive. How do they do that? They're very disciplined and they enjoy it because they may not enjoy, enjoy being disciplined at first, but they enjoy the results of being disciplined. You know, so again, you may not enjoy being accountable and mark and being accounting for all your time at first, but you're going to enjoy the freedom and the flexibility that it gives you once you're doing that. So if that's the trade-off, you know, being feeling relaxed, feeling calm, feeling free and knowing that I can have two, three or four, whatever days off you want. Um, if I discipline and buckle down, then that's a worthwhile trade-off because it's, again, it's really important. And then now we are just really getting to the point where we're halfway through this year. So whatever didn't happen, whatever your goals were in January to make for this year, if you haven't made those dollars, you got six more months to make those dollars or six more months to accomplish those goals. So how are you going to do it? You know, it, are you going to, again, be disciplined with your time and do it? Are you going to outsource? Are you going to modify your goals? Are you going to partner to be able to accomplish your goals, you know, the same goals with less amount of time? Well, how are you going to accomplish your goals for the end of the year? We do have some months. Like I think for me, like Thanksgiving and to Christmas is a wash between Thanksgiving, Christmas, between Thanksgiving and New Year's actually is basically a wash. 
So things I have planned would be like our celebration party, the first Saturday in December, things of that type. Because so I look at my, what I have left is from now until the end of October. I don't have six months, you know, basically, because everything else in November and December, more planning for next year, more, you know, seeding for next year, more uh, completing this year, finishing up this year, things of that type. So look at your calendar and see how much time you really have left you know, to be able to accomplish your goals and then be very disciplined and you can accomplish them. You can accomplish it. There are accomplishable. And then maybe if they're not, if you just decide if they're worth it to you, how important they are to you. Because again, we have these goals, but sometimes, um, you know, sometimes it's not as important as we think it is. Maybe life and happiness and then things get in the way. All right. You had these great goals and then we have things like pandemics or we have shutdowns or we have things that happen in business, things that are out of our control, you know, that you have no control over, but then be prepared for your plan B, be prepared for your backup, um, be prepared, you know, to go to, to, to still accomplish it maybe a different way. So even with the best, let's say best laid plans, sometimes go astray. But, you know, it's about the time management. And again, if you don't manage the time, the time, you, you don't have control over it. So I would love, love, love to hear some of your feedback, some of your ideas, some of your takeaways, some of the things that you're implementing to stay on time, stay scheduled. And what are, all the things are you implementing that's working for you? Because this is coffee and conversation. So it's conversation. It's time for you to converse.